Countries uh, generally worry about the introduction huh, of, of pests and, and diseases into their countries. Uh, they also worry about the import of uh, inferior uh, substandard food products. And for that reason, uh, countries put in place sanitary and phytosanitary measures. At the same time, uh, these measures cannot become uh, a protectionist uh, device. Uh, trade needs to be uh, flowing. So um, for that reason, countries put in place these, these SPS uh, measures. Now, um, countries are trading uh, with each other, eh? so you would like trade to be facilitated across borders. So countries need to harmonize eh, their measures, uh, and for that they need to work together. And ideally, uh, this is based on, on international standards. Now, there may be several specific areas eh, where countries can collaborate, because you can imagine eh, that pests and diseases do not eh, respect eh, political borders. They easily move across borders. So for that reason, countries need to put in place a monitoring and surveillance programs. That's one specific area where countries could do more uh, together. They can also, have, for instance, set up uh, specific training programs where they work together. They can work together uh, on laboratories and share uh, diagnostic uh, uh, capacity. So these are just some examples, I would say, uh, of areas where countries can work uh, together. And that makes all the more sense in countries uh, yeah, where the resources eh, are by definition uh, limited, so it does make sense and it's more cost efficient uh, to do things uh, together. So that, well, first of all, I think it's important that before you embark on any type of initiative that you clearly identify, you know, what are the needs. And for that, uh, our international partners have a number of tools uh, uh, developed. Uh, the FAO, the WHO, they have developed a food safety assessment tool and uh, the World Organization for Animal Health, the International Plant Protection Convention, they have their the tools that basically tell you these are the needs, this is what the countries want. At the same time, those needs are often huge. There are often 50 things eh, that need to be done in a country. So you also need to make decisions on where to prioritize eh, your, uh, your funding. And for that, I think it's important that countries get together, public sector, private sector, in the countries, to clearly identify their priority investment needs. And it's important eh, for, I think, all development partners, including the Asian Development Bank, to be included in those discussions early, early on and to listen sort of very carefully to the countries what the needs are. One, one important area is to look at, uh, let's say, the border clearance uh, procedures, right? So one area is that you have to say, okay, countries need to develop their SPS measures. Those SPS measures, uh, they need to be based on, on science. Uh, for that, you need to put in place a risk assessment. And risk assessment it's, it can be very complex. You need to uh, do pest surveillance, disease surveillance, you need to do inspections and so on. So I think that's one area, I think, where countries uh, still need a lot of uh, help. On the other hand, you know, you also have at some point goods uh, passing a, a border. Now, uh, especially in this region, uh, food and agriculture uh, production is quite important for the economies of all, all the countries here. And consignments also sometimes yeah, tend to be small. So um, the SPS border clearance is relatively important. And for that, I think it's important that the SPS agencies at the border uh, work increasingly together uh, with uh, customs at the border. And that is often not sufficiently happening. So improving sort of that border agency cooperation process, I think, is also definitely an area to focus on in this region.